This my homeboy all the way from Tupelo, Mississippi. Y'all give it up for Zach. Brag, everybody. Y'all give it up for Zach. Brag! Thank you, Huntsville. Thank you so much. I, uh, yeah, I drove in from Tupelo tonight. It was a long drive. I uh, tried to listen to the radio on the way over. I uh, had to turn it off because Maroon 5 was playing on three different stations at the same time. I wish I was joking about that. I had to turn it off. It, Maroon 5 on three different stations. I feel like that's information that the migrant caravan needs to know before they decide if this is really where they want to be. We need to get that information out to them. I, uh, I just found out the hard way that my mattress is not one of those that you see on TV where you can pour a glass of wine and set it on the bed and then jump on the bed and the glass of wine won't fall over. Yeah, I tried it. It turns out it's just a plain old water bed. So, it's my mistake. My brother just got married to his longtime girlfriend. I just got back from the wedding. Um, he's very proud. He's proud that he finally uh, locked that down. He calls her his trophy wife, which is gross. Uh, but he's a millennial, so I call her his participation trophy wife. <laughs> I am uh, I'm what you might call the Harry Potter friend in my group of friends. You guys know what I mean by that? Like if I'm with my friends and we're out uh, anywhere and anybody outside of our friend group mentions anything Harry Potter related, all of my, my friends kind of smirk and cut their eyes at me because they all know that both of my parents were murdered. So. <laughs> the boy who lived. I'm trying to lose some weight, I'm trying to lose some weight lately. I, uh, I started to get fat a while back ago and, um, and I did it. I made it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. No, but like, there's a difference of getting fat and being fat. You know you're getting fat when your clothes start to fit you a little tighter than they used to. But like you know you're there. You know you're fat when the back of your shower stops getting wet while you're in it. That's where, that's where I'm at right now. It's a real wake-up call. No, but it's my fault. Like, I like to eat. I'm not afraid to admit it. But I didn't really realize that food was a problem until the other day I drove by Taco Bell and just smiled at it instinctively. <laughs> not just any smile either. It was like the, like the eager, boyish, shy smile. Like I was watching my prom date walk down the stairs. That's how I smiled at the Taco Bell. Look at how cute. I'm trying to make some more health conscious decisions though, trying to eat a little better. A friend of mine suggested that I uh, try cutting up a kiwi for a snack. I tried it, I cut one up, and I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It was just too hard to get past all the blood and feathers and sharp, tiny bones. <laughs> it was yuck. I would like to get back down to my pre-baby weight though. That was, uh, that's my weight before I ate that baby that one time. I just became an organ donor recently. Um, yes, yeah, somebody stole my truck nuts. So, <laughs> driving around in a 2002 Chevy Eunuch. It's embarrassing. I was driving home the other night from my WNBA Fantasy League draft, and, and when out from nowhere, a little hedgehog ran out in front of my vehicle. And it happened so fast, I didn't really have time to react. Uh, and I couldn't help it. I, I hit it. I hit the hedgehog and uh, it was a mess too, man. Just gold rings were just bouncing all over the road. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Um, I love doing comedy. It makes me happy. A lot of people don't realize that comedy often comes from a dark place. A lot of comics suffer with mental health issues like depression. Uh, Robin Williams, for example. My brother and I were talking about him recently. My brother couldn't understand. He said, I don't understand why Robin Williams, of all people, would kill himself. And I said, well, you know, a lot of things probably factored into it, depression being one of those. And he said, that makes even less sense to me. He was the funniest man on the planet. He made everybody laugh. Why couldn't he make himself laugh? Why couldn't he make his blues go away? And I said, well, you know, depression is a disease just like any other disease. Can you laugh away your hepatitis? And, <laughs> and he said, I don't have hepatitis. So I stabbed him with my hepatitis knife. So chuckle that away. I'm so glad it's cold because I don't have to mow my grass for a while now. 
like I, I'm one of those people that I like to cut my grass. I don't get to as much as I like to, but uh, but now I don't have to. But my neighbor is one of those guys that keeps an immaculate yard, and he's all the time making comments to me about me needing to mow my grass. Recently, right before I got cold, I came home, and he had mowed his grass, but he had also mowed several uh, rows into my yard. You guys ever had a neighbor do that for you? Like they look, it looks like they're doing something neighborly, but again, the guy is very passive aggressive about me keeping my yard uh, up to par with his. So it looked, it, I had to finish it. Instead of coming home from my 12 hour shift at the hospital, I had to come home and mow my grass because it would have looked worse if I had just left it like that. So while I was out there, my neighbor came out and he said, hey neighbor, you'd have to get to that soon. Figured I'd do you a favor and help you out, get you started. So like a good neighbor, I reciprocated. The next time I had to cut my yard, I went over into his yard and I told his daughter that Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> I said, hey neighbor, I know you'd have to do that eventually. I figured I'd help you out and get you started. <laughs> Anybody on social media? Social media is weird, like Facebook, I'm getting tired of it, I need to get off of it. I keep seeing these weird things on it, like uh, these Facebook quizzes. Somebody posted a quiz the other day, it said, take this quiz to find out what golden girl you are. <laughs> That's so stupid. Like, I don't need to take a quiz to know I'm a Sophia, all right? <laughs> Pussycat, if you gotta take a quiz to find out what golden girl you are, you're a rose, all right? Don't even bother taking the quiz, <laughs> you're a rose. But the one internet trend I cannot and will not ever understand is uh, taking pictures of your food. I don't understand this. Like, I have a friend that does this. It doesn't matter if it's a street hot dog or the finest dish you can get at Olive Garden. She thinks that it's frame worthy. And I asked her one time, I said, why do you take so many pictures of your, ki of your food? She said, why do you take so many pictures of your kids? It's a fair question. I got a fair answer. One day when I'm old and my wife is old and our kids are grown, we'll be able to sit down and look at the pictures of our kids when they were younger and reminisce fondly about those times that we had together. Her pictures of her food are basically just baby pictures of her doo-doo. And I have a real hard time imagining her and her husband sitting down with her dusty old iPhone 4, scrolling through pictures of the burrito that tore her up so bad in 2009, they missed the beginning of Avatar. I used to date a girl who was bulimic. She used to take pictures of her food too, but then she'd go to the bathroom and delete them. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much, you've been great.